that fractality, for example, the fractality of the fibers of Purkinje electrically is how your heart gets the voltage to fire. It's that simple. And that's why the pine cone opens and closes slowly during the year, because the electric generator is modulating the amount of voltage it needs to get from gravity called light. And that, that voltage difference top to bottom of that system is how you measure freshness. This is the new biotech industry. We looking for new biotech here? Good, we got it. If you look at the way you measure life in an egg, this is Steiner, etheric formative force. Etheric formative force is the flux lines of capacitance. Projective geometry is the symmetry lines. And the voltage difference is an electric pressure due to the plasma becoming less centripetal and more centrifugal and vice versa due to fractality. And so here is how you measure a chicken egg for life. You've got 4 to 12 millivolts end to end. And you put it in this capacitor, spectrum analyze the weak electric field, and you can measure life versus death. Life is the ability to weakly organize your electric field. That's what that is. It's very easy to understand. The difference between a living seed and a dead seed you're studying the seed. Why are you alive, Mr. Seed? I would like to know. How did you get life? <laughs> the biologist will tell you, well, the protoplasm is able to attract the mineral in the water. It can suck it in. Well, how did the protoplasm learn how to suck? I think your answer really sucks, Mr. Biologist. No, it, it, the protoplasm learned to suck because in the cell because the electric plasma became centripetal for the same reason that you will be able to navigate when you lose a dream and when you die. If your plasma body is centripetal, you will be able to steer. For the same reason a jellyfish or a medusa will be able to steer only if they can suck. So the answer doesn't really suck. It's rather fractally attractive, I think. So, so life versus death for the seed and by the way, for every living enzyme and every living thing, life versus death is the moment the plasma field becomes centripetal, implosive, and attractive. That's why implosion is the secret science of life itself. So, going back to the technology then, I thought where Schauberger was going, but he never quite got there. He just about discovered golden ratio and then the tragic circumstances. Um, so I took the equation for the perfection of that cone, which I invented, and I applied it to hydrodynamics and did CAD CAM. And not only do I have golden ratio, golden ratio, golden ratio, 3D, the perfect cone, but I have golden ratio in the cascade from the diameter. This thing is very sexy. <laughs> and then we built it in a clear, so the new version, you can see the implosion happen inside. This is just a picture of the old version here. But then, we coupled that, that's called phase conjugate hydrodynamics, implosive liquid. And you can create water treatment, fuel treatment, very powerful. And then we couple that to phase conjugate magnetics, implosive magnetics. Now, summary. In phase conjugate optics, physics is clear, you get self-organization. New to physics, but still well known by some, phase conjugate dielectrics. Hundreds of papers by Tom Bearden, a phase conjugate dielectric is bioactive. You want to switch on and off a stem cell? <laughs> we better teach you how. Stem is the name for the root of a fractal. So this is basically the key that that fractality is what is the switch. So phase conjugate dielectrics are becoming to be known, and uh, Tom Bearden wrote many papers, and now we're the first to build them and measure them, and we're applying it to metabolic rate generators electrically. However, phase conjugate magnetic is a word that I invented. And here, I show you the principle. I take two magnets. This is the south pole, and the black tape is the north pole. And if you see in this animation, and I, I have them in here, but I didn't bring them today. But if I rotate these two magnets properly, here you see the black, they're, here they're attracting. The opposite poles are attracting. Now here, very slowly, 
I take the magnets apart. I rotate the magnet now so that the light poles, the two south poles, the silver end, are facing each other across a washer that's high magnetic flux permissivity. And now I'm rotating that magnet. I'm rotating, I'm rotating. And I find the angle rotating two magnets. And I find the angle where the two octahedra line up, because we now know that the strong magnetic field is not just toroidal, it's octahedral. And if I line up the two octahedra and guess what happens? I got two cones of magnetic flux lines doing this right there, extremely high magnetic flux density, and now the two light poles are sticking together. I'm pulling and the two light poles are attracting. That's called phase conjugate magnetics, and I invented it. Well, I was the first one to describe the principle, let's say. The two light poles are attracting, yes. The south to south are stuck together. Yes. Now, we've had a lot of physicists fall off their chair, and we like it when they fall <laughs> off their chair. That's good that they should fall off their chair. Uh, so, in that case, I have extreme magnetic flux density, and I use that principle, uh, and I also use a stack, a nine, it's proprietary, but I actually have nine gaps in that array of magnetics. And it has to do with the nine magnetic donuts that make plasma self-organized, deep space nine. We're going to go into that later. It's whale dreamers. It's all about the nine donuts in a row. We talked about it earlier. And now I have phase conjugate magnetics and phase conjugate hydrodynamics. Yeah, the two north poles will also attract. Yeah, absolutely. But there's a difference in centripetal versus centripetal, so we start with the south. It has to affect that the south pole compresses and therefore increases pain and healing rate, or the north pole on a wound decreases pain and healing rate because it's centripetal. Pain and healing rate. Absolutely. You've got a toothache, you put the south pole on, it's going to hurt more. The healing rate could increase the wound piece compression. Put the north pole on, it's going to hurt less, but you probably slow down the heal. Healing is the compression that restores practicality. So, increasing the pain is what any homeopath is going to do. It's actually a piece of focus. You spoke to your point that. Well, anyway, uh, so this is the, we pass water through there, this is the effect on entropy, and this is the effect on growth. He said this, this is about uh, two weeks later, same soil, same feed, same light, same heat, same temperature, same water, except we put the water for this plant through that device and recirculated it. We had a 